Hey everyone, it's Pastor Christian again. So last week, uh, this past Sunday really, was Easter, right? We got to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about something that happened pretty much right after the resurrection. And we're going to talk about a character that you probably have all heard of. His name is Doubting Thomas, right? Thomas being one of the disciples, he doubted uh, Jesus' resurrection. Um, and so, but first, before we do that, because we're talking about seeing and believing in things that aren't there potentially or seeing things, uh, I want you to take a look at it on the screen. I want you to see this eye chart. So what I want you to do is try and read the first few lines, see if you can read it, and then as you look, it keeps getting more blurry as you go down. And so I want you to see if you can read it. Um, but, you know, if you can, that's great. If you can't, well, that's okay too. Uh, some people wear glasses because they're not able to see, and I'm one of those. If I take off my glasses, as I've said before, um, people tend to start looking like blobs because I'm so blind. But we're going to look at something what happened and how uh, Thomas ended up believing. And so let's take a look at this Bible story. First, if you can open your Bibles, uh, John chapter 20, verse 19. Okay, so John chapter 20, verse 19. Is John in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Yeah, that's right, New Testament. And what division is John in? You guys should know this. Yeah, the Gospels. So let's take a look at this. John chapter 20, verse 19. Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace be with you. Having said this, he showed them his hands and his side, so the, so the disciples re rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Okay, so Jesus is, the disciples are gathered, rather, and they're just kind of got the doors locked. They're kind of scared, potentially, that uh, the people that killed Jesus are going to want to kill them, too. Well, Jesus is just kind of pops up out of nowhere. The door's locked, so he couldn't just knock in to get in, but he just appears in front of the disciples. And he explained something really cool to him. He explained to them about the Holy Spirit. He explained to them that there's going to be a helper that's going to be sent, which is what we're going to look at next week. And he told the disciples that they need to forgive others, right? One of the disciples, uh, his name was Thomas, I often referred to as Doubting Thomas, he wasn't with them. Uh, and so the disciples told Thomas what had happened. Let's take a look at this. John chapter 20, verse 25. So the other disciples were telling him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, if I don't see the mark, on, mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger into the mark of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's a pretty powerful statement from what Thomas said. I mean, if I don't feel, if I don't get to see it with my own eyes, I just, I won't believe. That's what Thomas had said. Well, about a week later, Thomas was able to see it with his own eyes. The disciples were all together, and Thomas once again, um, or Jesus, rather, once again showed up, and he was able to see. Let's take a look. John chapter 20, verse 26. Jesus came and stood among you, among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Don't be faithless, but believe. Thomas responded to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. So Thomas ended up realizing it's all true. It's all true. He, he was able to see it with his own eyes and he believed. But there at the end of it, if you, if you caught it, because you see me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. The other disciples, they got to see Jesus too, but blessed are those that haven't seen, those that have faith, right? Those that may not be able to see what's going on, but they can believe in Christ, right? Jesus, he did many other miracles and, th and things, um, but Jesus' disciple John, he wrote this gospel in this portion so that people can believe in Jesus. They can believe in him, even if they may not see him. Think about it this way. You see wind, we're in Oklahoma, it's a super windy state, right? You see wind blowing across really often, um, but you don't actually see wind, you see the effects of wind. You can see it blowing the trees back and forth. You can see the dirt getting stirred up sometimes. You can see leaves being blown across. You see the effects of wind, but you believe it's there, right? Because you can see the effects of it, right? You believe in something that you can't necessarily see. Well, we have to have faith like that. We have to believe in Jesus and believe what he did for us. Even though we may not necessarily be able to see Jesus, we see him through other avenues. We see him through his scripture, through God's word. Right? We see the truth of Christ. We see him uh, in the lives of others that are believers that have accepted Jesus and made him the boss of your life. So don't get discouraged if you can't just see Jesus and you, get, and you really just want to see the person of Jesus. Don't be discouraged in that because he's given us different avenues to see him. 
and most importantly, through his word. So I wanna encourage you, look through the word, see all the things that God has done and believe in him. That's what I want you to do. So this week, gather around with your family, talk about how you can believe in Christ and have faith in him, even when you can't see him. All right, thanks. I'll see you guys next time.